So today we are going to talk about the molecular orbital theory. Previously we talked about the balance bond theory. The difference between the two theories is how each one regards the, the new formed molecule after the formation of the, the covalent bonds. So the balance bond theory says that if there are two atoms and each one of them needs, for example, just one electron to be energy stable, like, like the hydrogen atom. A bigger orbital is formed where the two electrons are, are shared and the two nuclei also are found in the middle, forming a new molecule, which is energy stable. But if the atoms are a little bit more complex, for example, let's say this is the nucleus and this is the 1s sublevel and this is the 2s sublevel and this is the 2px. Okay? This contains two electrons and this contains two electrons and that one contains just one electron and it needs another electron to be stable. If another atom just like this one wants to share that uh, single electron so that it also can be energy stable, the Weisbaum theory said that just these two electrons here, which form the bond, affect the formation of the new molecules, while all the rest of the other electrons doesn't have any role in the formation of the molecule, or they doesn't affect the covalent bonding. This is how the balance bond theory regards the covalent bonding formation. While the molecular orbital theory gets more general and says that, well, all the electrons and all the energy sublevels in the two atoms affect the new molecule. And in fact, where, when the covalent bonds occur, new orbitals are formed in which um, the two atoms form like a new big molecule with two nuclear or more than nuclei. So that it's a molecule with multi-nuclei where all the electrons are embedded and all the electrons have a role in the covalent bonding formation. So here is, uh, here are the names of the molecular orbitals which are formed. So if the covalent bonding occurs between S sublevels, the new molecular orbital will have the name of a sigma, sigma orbital. And so does the covalent bond. So if, if um, covalent bonding occurs between S sublevels, it's a sigma bond. If it occurs between two P sublevels, it's a pi bond. If it occurs between D sublevel, it's a delta bond. If it occurs between F sublevels, it's a phi bond. Fun fact, each um, name of these Latin letters, or Greek letters, I don't know, um, begins with the same syllable. So S, Sigma, P, Pi, D, Delta, F, Phi. So that's it. Now we will have an example to, to make this a little bit more clear. So we have um, ethine or acetylene. which has the molecular formula of C2H2. So, here the type of hybridization is an SP hybridization. So, apparently, we are going to use 1S orbital and 1P orbital. That will be the, the Px. So, the electronic configuration of carbon is the, the 1s, then we have the 2s, and 
then we have the 2p. The 2p contains three orbitals, the px, the py, and the pz. As carbon contains six electrons, they will be distributed like that. Two electrons, two electrons, and two electrons here. One in the px and one in the py, and this is vacant or empty. So the first step in hybridization, as we mentioned in the previous video, one electron jumps from the 2s to the pz. So now we have uh, four semi-vacant orbitals. Now carbon is ready to make cover and bonds with hydrogen and carbon. So as each carbon atom just needs one hydrogen atom, here, here is the shape after the hybridization. Okay, just one p orbital, because it's an sp hybridization, which is the px. Okay, it goes down to the 2s energy level. And this remains as they are, the py and the pz. Okay? So, the name of the new hybridized orbital will be an sp orbital. Now, this is the shape of the, of the carbon atom. This is the nucleus, and this is the 1s sublevel. This is the 2s sublevel, or it will be the, the sp hybridized orbital. And, and then we have the, P, the py on the y-axis, and the pz on the z-axis. So, we'll draw another carbon um, atom. Now, here we said each carbon atom will bond with just one hydrogen atom. So, an electron will be added here by a hydrogen atom, okay? So, this will be a hydrogen atom here. Still, there are three vacant places. So, here's what happens. A bond is formed here between these two carbon atoms and the hybridized orbital. Still, the PY and the PZ all have a vacant place for an electron. So, bonding takes place between the two PZ, between the two PZ orbitals, okay? And also, it takes place between the two PY orbitals. Now, analyzing the shapes of the bonds in here, we just mentioned that the bond which occurs between the, any two S sublevels, it's a sigma bond. So originally at this sublevel was an S sublevel before it was hybridized. So this is a sigma bond. Okay? And then these bonds are between P sublevels. So they'll be pi bonds. In order to differentiate between the two bonds, Always, the sigma bond takes place between two sublevels on the same axis. So if we uh, notice here, if this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis and this is the z-axis, the two s sublevels are on the same axis. They're like that. One here and one here and this is the bonding. So it's called a collinear overlap a collinear overlap, while the pi bond takes place between two parallel sublevels. So here we have the pz, for example, and the other pz is just like that. They are parallel. So the bond is formed like that, between two parallel uh, sublevels. This is called a collateral overlap, a collateral overlap. So this is it for today. I hope it was clear, and until the next time, I thank you for watching, and see you.